Hi everyone, my name is Steve Bell and welcome to For the Journey This Week. And today um, I want to say a few words about a little prayer that has been meaningful to me over the years and then I'll teach you a song I wrote to go with it and then we'll light a candle and soak in it for a bit and uh, you'll, you'll know what that means in just a minute. So if you're at all like me, you're finding these days to be pretty troubling, and uh, I don't often know how to pray. Um, I've never been great at prayer, and uh, I, uh, my brain is just a kind of little nest of little mice running around all the time. And sometimes I just need something to focus me or just something to anchor me in prayer. Um, and it's good to have little things like that memorized and in my back pocket that I can sort of pull out and lean on. Um, uh, sort of have uh, something on the ready that I can use. So um, several years ago, I, I co-led a course on contemplative prayer at Regent College in Vancouver with Dr. Bruce Highmarsh. And Bruce did the heavy lifting for, as far as the teaching went, for sure. Um, I added some anecdotal material as well as some sung prayers to help us do what sung prayers are so good at doing, and that is descend with the mind into the heart where real transformation takes place. So think that through a little bit. To, to descend with the mind, we have ideas, but how do you get the ideas from here to here? And music and art can often do this for, for us. And I wrote this simple repetitious prayer from Psalm 70 verse 1 as a prayer that we could sing daily at the beginning, at the end of each session. Uh, and the verse says this. Um, it's very simple. Again, come to my help, O God. Lord, hurry to my rescue. That's it. That's the whole prayer. And I'll, I'll say it again. Come to my help, O God. Lord, hurry hurry to my rescue. So I wrote a very simple song to go with it. I'll teach it to you. Um, and um, uh, uh, so basically the way it works is I sing the line and then you respond back. We'll just do this a couple times and then we'll play a recorded version, which is um, kind of help you, I think, um, to enter into a little bit. Because I guess, come to my help, oh God, Lord, hurry to my rescue. You sing, come to my help, oh God, Lord, hurry to And then I modulate from a minor key to a major key, and it gives a bit of a lift. Um, and I'll tell you why in a minute, or that'll make sense in a minute. Come to my help, O oh God, Lord, hurry to my rescue. Come to my help, O oh God, Lord, hurry to my rescue. And then back down to the minor. Come to my help, O oh God, Lord, hurry to my rescue. In this form of prayer, you sort of grab that melody and that, that lyric or that text, and then you repeat it over and over and over, not because um, by doing so it somehow cre increases the efficacy, but there's certain ways that when we repeat these things over and over, they some become part of us until they be sort of literally be, uh, get lodged in our heart. And like a, a favorite song, sometimes you'll find um, you're, you're, you're doing one thing and you find this thing playing in the background. Um, I have more than once woken up from sleep and realized that this song was playing, was on loop. This prayer was praying. I have more than once been in a, a stressful situation um, uh, and then found that this thing is playing in the background. And so I, that's kind of the point of it. Uh, before, I, I, uh, before we uh, sing it again, uh, let me just read you something about the prayer itself from, uh, oh, this is the wrong book, <laughs> uh, from St. John Cassian. This is from a book um, that I wrote with Jamie Howison um, uh, on the Psalms. It's called I Will Not Be Shaken. Um, and John Cassian in the, in the third century instructed his followers that this one little verse that we've been singing contained all that was needed for the fullness of prayer. So this is a mighty little verse, right? Praying this verse was sufficient to ward off, and I, I love this language, all worldly disturbances and the turbulence of sin until the union of the Father and Son, of the Son and Father, fill our senses and our minds. 
He describes how this little verse carries within it the cry of help to God in the face of every danger. It expresses the humility of pious confession. It conveys the watchfulness born of unending worry and fear. It conveys a sense of our frailty, the assurance of being heard, the confidence in help that is always and everywhere present. That's a mighty little prayer, isn't it? But he also warned, however, that spiritual danger lay not only in times of distress and temptation, therefore we sing it in the minor key, but equally in seasons of joy and good fortune, and we also sing it in a major key. That's why we kind of go back and forth. The early saints were well aware that the evil one could distort the good even as Christ could redeem the bad. And so there is no circumstance where this humble prayer is not needed. So for the journey this week, I offer you this prayer. Um, I'm going to play you, I'm going to light a candle and then just play you the recorded version because it's, it's, it's lovely and you can kind of sink into a little bit. You'll hear me singing the, the line and it's answered by my friend Don Amaro, uh, who's a dear friend of mine. Um, and so this is for you for the journey this week. Come to my help, O oh God, 